Hello, I'm Dr. Scott Wadier. And I'm Tommy Welling, and you're listening to the Fasting for Life podcast. This podcast is about using fasting as a tool to regain your health, achieve ultimate wellness, and live the life you truly deserve. Each episode is a short conversation on a single topic with immediate actionable steps. We cover everything from fat loss and health and wellness to the science of lifestyle design. We started Fasting for Life because of how fasting has transformed our lives, and we hope to share the tools that we have learned along the way. Hey, everyone, wanted to hop on real quick before we get into today's episode and let y'all know that the next fasting challenge is upon us. It's coming up on July 26th through August 1st. And we are calling this one Master Your Fasting Challenge, a VIP experience. So it's a little different twist on the previous challenges that we've run, but we have been doing this for long enough now that we started to see some trends in what makes a successful fasting lifestyle stick. So during this seven days that you spend with us, we're gonna be leveling up your fasting skill set. We're gonna be talking about mindset and habit formation and how to make fasting a viable solution to your weight and health goals. So don't miss out, head to the show notes for more information, dates, times, frequently asked questions. It's in the show notes, head there now, click the link. We absolutely want to see you get the best results that you possibly can through your fasting efforts. And this master your fasting challenge, a VIP experience is going to deliver. We can guarantee that. So head to the show notes, click the link, and we'll see you on the inside. Now to today's episode. Hey everyone, welcome to the Fasting for Life podcast. My name is Dr. Scott Wadier and I'm here as always with my good friend and colleague, Tommy Welling. Good afternoon to you, sir. Hey Scott, how are you? Doing fantastic, my friend. Excited for today's episode. We are diving into the bag of listener Q&A questions again. We've had nice. so many recently from Instagram and Facebook messages, which I am not great at checking. So if we missed you, apologies. But from <laughs> our email, from our community group on Facebook, if you're looking to be around, like-minded fasting for life fasters, please head to that group. That's a that's a mouthful. Right. Uh, head to the show notes, click the link, come on in where we talk about fasting 24-7. Mm. So welcome into today's episode. Shout out of appreciation to the growth that you guys are showing us through the love of the downloads. The show yeah. just keeps growing. The reviews keep coming in. We're just really appreciative for each and every one of you that listen in, that have gotten something or applied something of value to your fasting lifestyle and just dozens and dozens and dozens of messages every single month about people really applying what it is that that we talk about from week to week. And if you want to yeah. learn more about who we are and what we do, if you're new to the podcast, welcome in. Appreciate you giving us a listen. Tommy and I's story is episode one of the podcast. If you want to learn more about why we do what we do, and our goal is to really reach as many people as we can to help them lose weight, regain their health, reverse their diabetes, and just improve their quality of life and, and encourage y'all, yeah. the listeners, to know that you have a choice when it comes to this and everything you've tried in the past doesn't reflect your next attempt's results. You mm. can do this. Yeah. Fasting can be the solution for you. So I know we have a special shout out on a recent review, Tommy, that we've gotten over the last few weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Five-star review. Thank you so much, Bob. Bob said, these are great podcasts, short, to the point. Love the duo. We love you too, Bob. They give and take in such a positive manner. Enjoyed each one. So appreciate that, Bob. Hope you're doing well on your fasting journey. Thank you for listening. Yeah, love the duo. I, I appreciate that shout out. <laughs> and we reserve the right to not always make it short and to the point. But in sure. today's world of podcasting, man, you can go two, three hours on a Joe Rogan. Right. Right. Or at Huberman, you can go down a <laughs> rabbit hole. So yes, we want to make it, you know, 20, 30, 40 minutes, something you can walk away with that applies directly mm -hmm. to your life, just like Bob. So yeah, hundred percent shout out appreciation. You guys showing up and listening in tells the podcast powers it be that we're doing something of value and we're going to continue to bring it to you each and every week. So yeah. with that, Tommy, we're going to dive into the bag of questions and we find a lot of overlap. So the ones that we bring to you are the ones that we find are the most common threads in a fasting application to lose weight, get healthy. If you're a beginner, if you've dabbled, if you're more advanced, these things are, mm -hmm. are typically compartmentalized into these threads that we see. 
So we're going to hit on a couple of those today. And when we start off with, I want to start off with this one, Tommy. And this comes in from Kimberly. This was posted on our community group. Again, you can find that link to that community group in the show notes if you want to come in and join us and break the first two rules of fasting. But which Kimberly are, had, don't which talk are, about fasting. Don't talk about <laughs> fasting and don't talk about fasting, which yeah. we do. But Kimberly had a question where she asked, anyone do five to seven day fast, eat one meal, then go again for another five to seven days? Oh, wow. If so, what were your results like? Thinking of doing this, for the next month. Now, a little context here. Mm -hmm. And you, you've got some points you want to pull out of this in terms of things that you, you might be able to take some liberties with or read between the lines with. Sure. But she started fasting. This is another question or post that she made a few days prior to the one that I just read about the five to seven day fast with a meal in between. Mm hmm she said, I've been fasting since November of 22, and I've lost approximately 40 pounds, still have wow. about 50 more to go. So shout wow. out, Kimberly. Great work. Incredible. You're doing yeah. it. You're doing it. Once and for all, you are doing it. And then she right. says, I thought by now I would have all kinds of energy, but I don't. Any mm. advice on how I can get some? So we see these two having some overlap and possibly some perspectives for some of you listeners out there. And maybe it's not 90 pounds for you. Maybe it's 50 and you're at 20. Sure. Or maybe it's 20 and you're at eight. But the same principles can apply. Yeah. It can be very, very tempting to start to push into longer fasts, especially when you've been doing it a while. You feel like- you've had results. Yeah. And you've had results, right? But then all of a sudden, like maybe the scale stops moving, especially if you have substantial weight that you still want to lose. And then, but you've been trying for weeks or maybe even months. And it's just like, ah, I just can't get the dang thing to budge. It can sometimes be tempting to, to continue to push into longer and longer fast. So when I hear something like this, I'm going to assume that there might be something like that. Like this, this might be part of a plateau or a, like a longer term plateau, especially. But you know, one of my first questions is how how consistent have you felt lately? Like, do you feel like you could you know set a twenty hour timer, let's say, or a twenty two hour timer, and or crush a nomad? Yeah, right. Yeah. Opening and closing a window, like yeah, without grazing, without freelancing, without weekend warrioring, or without white knuckling it. Yes. You know, feeling yes. like oh man, this is so frustrating, or I don't know how I'm going to be able to do this day after day after day. Because if if you haven't felt consistent like that lately then that can definitely lead to feeling like, man, I, maybe I just need to avoid the kitchen, avoid the pantry, avoid the next food decision because I'm, I'm not sure what it's going to be and I just can't seem to you know, get any traction right now unless I'm pushing into a longer fast. And then this extremely long extended fast with just like one meal in between can start to feel tempting, but it's, it's usually not the holy grail. It's usually not the answer you know, that's going to actually, you know, lead to, to better longer term sustainable results. So some of the questions or the comments that came in underneath it, Patricia said, interesting, I'd like to also know the benefits. Uh, a couple of people said following, wow, I don't think I could do that, especially around this family when I have to cook meals for everyone, wish I had that kind of willpower. Sure. Uh, well, I don't want you to have that kind of willpower, Jade, because that's not sustainable, right? So mm -hmm. maybe one time, but not repeated. Erica said, I've tried, but it's quite challenging. The hardest part for me is not to make that one meal decision wholesome and not a splurge. Right, right. Then comes the question, I did, although a lot of people don't recommend them, which we don't. Mm. The first week I lost 10 pounds and kept dropping three to four pounds weekly the, the following four weeks. I built up to it for months, doing 48, 72s, 96, and finally yep. five days. Yeah. So that's, that's a plan that I like from Yesenia. But the question from Kimberly came in, did you gain any of it back after going back to regular fasting? Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes. Of course. There of will course be a regain, especially coming off longer fasts. You will see a 40 to 60%, up to 40 to 60% regain, mm -hmm. which is that glycogen storage, short-term energy supply, and water. And food. Like actually and, having yeah, food Yeah, and when you start your, reindu uh, yeah, yeah. reintroducing food. So- I like the idea of doing a five to seven day fast. I like Yesenia's plan of like building up to it, mm -hmm. right? But there's, there's that idea that this is going to be the thing to get you closer to your goal. Yeah. I like that application. Sure. What I don't like is what is the sustainability of the weight loss once you're done doing this? Hmm. Yeah, or because why do you think, why do you want to actually do this? And we don't know. 
we can speculate, like I said, and take some some liberties. But why would this be your next level up or next solution? Now, yeah, doing a five to seven day fast, sure. But not having, why, why the one meal? Why not just do a 10 to 14 day fast? Yeah, that's a good point. If you take a break from food decisions for five to seven days like that, it can what, be what, yeah, it can be. Why put the one meal in the middle of it? What would that one meal look like anyway? Because I mean, psychologically, you've hit, you've hit the cruise control mark, you know, for sure. Like five to seven days in, you're generally like probably not even really thinking about food at that point. Not hungry. Then, yeah. Feeling good. So now you got to go break it and go make what could be a slippery slope of decisions, especially if things haven't been working very well recently. If, if your nutrition just hasn't been 100% on point, I'm not confident that it would be in that one meal. Because if you have fear of missing out or, oh my gosh, it's been, that's been kind of white knuckling. Now I got to go do it again. What am I going to miss out for the next week? How many invitations or family dinners have I, have I pushed off in the meantime? Or kids meals have I said uh, no to and willpowered my way through, like Jade said in the comments? Sure. I would just go the whole way. Like if you want to do a 10 to 14 and you feel like that's what you're going to do, then I would just do that. I mean, the, the longest I've done is, is a seven day fast. Right. But I would not want to have a meal like, at day three and a half or day five, and then, you know, do a couple more days after that for sure. No, that's, that's tough. So I know we always joke around this, but about Upton Sinclair wrote the fasting cure in 1911. And he says, no sane man or woman would want to do 72 hour fast over and over and over again. Right. There's some physiological stuff that takes place. Mentally taxing into, too though. What was that? Mentally taxing too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Of course it is. Now, if you've got 300 pounds to lose, okay. Yeah. That's probably going to work for you for a while. Mm -hmm. But is that the maintenance piece? Is that what it looks like after? No, or, definitely or as, not. as Kimberly said, you're going back to regular fasting. Yeah. So we always want to begin with the end in mind. And I love the idea of doing a seven-day fast once a year. Walter Longo has some incredible research on that mm -hmm. before the fast mimicking prolon craze that's out there now. That's, you know, he has some great research, which is getting harder to find, but about the regenerative benefits. So what happens yeah. is you get deeper into these longer fasts is that your body starts to go through some cellular physiological processes, right? And depending on what research and who you listen to and where it comes from, there's going to be different benefits that are noted. But I know for me that when I lost the 50 pounds in 50 days, at the end of those 50 days, and in that 50 days, I used fasting windows like Yesenia mentioned, you know, 24s, 36s, 48s, a couple of 60 to 70s, right? And then mm -hmm. I had one five-day fast in there it was either five or seven. I can't remember. I don't have my journal where I tracked it all in front of me. Mm -hmm. It was years ago. I think it was but a five day. You think it was five day? Yeah. I think it was. The scale stopped moving on day three. Mm. And then most recently when I did a seven day fast this past year, the scale stopped moving on day four and actually went up on day five and six. Yep. I'm, I was in a deeper level of ketosis. I wasn't in ideal nutritional ketosis or weight loss ketosis anymore because mm. that's not the only driving factor. Imagine if you'd been hanging your hat on the weight loss right. or that interval right which there. Which is what I feel this might have to do with, which is why I'm right. bringing this up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that can be very frustrating, demotivating, demoralizing. And, th right. and then the exact opposite of how you would want to go into a second round of that, let alone the fact that it, it's kind of weird physiologically speaking when, when your body starts going, okay, no food's coming in, right? And so you get this transition into just fat burning, tapping into old long-term fat stores. And then all of a sudden you like, you hit the brakes, you know, you, you, you throw the car into reverse, you know, on the highway, right? And then and you, you break this fast. So like, how long is it going to take you to properly break that fast? Like, I wouldn't want to break a five to seven day fast in any, in any short order. No, I would want to go slow. I'd want to give myself right. 24 to 36 hours. I'd want to have some bone broth. I'd want to, yeah. you know, eat some fermented foods, like wade into a, have a small meal, protein focus, then have a larger meal, right? Mm. So... Yeah, for sure. To your point, I wouldn't want to do that either. No. And then can you imagine like the difficulty in closing the window on the back end of that right. too, where it's kind of like, well, I just went five or seven days. Like, right. is, is my is my is my eating window really over or should I maybe squeeze in a little bit more or some more yeah. calories or, oh, I missed out on, you know, such and such. Like, that's tough. That's decision fatigue. Just thinking about it for me. Yeah. And she was thinking about doing it for the next month. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's four rounds. That's a lot of fasting. So we yeah. are definitely not recommending you do that, Kimberly. And we'll reach out to to see if there's additional support we can lend to you. We have another challenge coming coming up here 
and you know we run six to eight a year so we've got the challenges which would be a, a great place to learn some of the skills but we always want to use the fasting windows as repetitions or practice to Ooh, see what not reparations right yeah repetitions not reparations i oh, like that man. yeah as practice for what post weight loss looks like because we don't want to use fasting as a diet it's not about the weight. There's so many amazing things that happen in terms of your habits and weight loss management and yeah. learning how to prioritize food and make quality better food of life. choices, et cetera, right? Yeah. Quality of life, health improvement, disease reversal, right? Coming off medications. So I think part of this, the other part of her, her post a few days earlier was about how she can get some energy. Hmm. And it's some of the, the comments are really great. You know, sleep more, drink electrolytes, don't work out too much drink some more water, you know, how you're fueling your body, all of these things come in. Yeah. And she mentions that I, I was expecting to have more energy. And mm -hmm. when we hear something like that, before we even read the comments, I typically think food choices or sure. sleep stress cycle. Mm -hmm. So either yeah. insanely high stress, cortisol, crappy, terrible sleep, which go hand in hand. I, with I was going to say they're choices. all related, right? Yeah, yeah. Which were part of my three musketeers of of insulin resistance when I was uncovering what my problem was a few years back. And she even mentions, I don't choose the healthiest foods when I eat. Sure. So some of you are gonna resonate with this and some of you are gonna go, I can just white knuckle my way through everything. Okay, great. What happens when the white knuckling stops? What happens when you stop eating the Weight Watchers food? What happens when mm. you come off Jenny Craig? What happens when you stop taking ACG? What happens when you stop using fasting as a diet? Well, now you're off. So yeah. we want that food choice freedom and so I would rarely encourage you, Kimberly, at this point, to celebrate what, what you've succeeded with, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. And now it's time to keep the fasting window shorter and giving yourself more opportunities to make better nutrition choices more consistently, which is going to serve you for the yeah. second half of your weight loss journey. Yeah. The, the other thing, I wonder if this is happening, like if you had this expectation of much higher energy levels, which I... I wholeheartedly believe they're on the way. They're still yep. coming for you. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. keep going, keep pushing. But if you did have an expectation and now it's becoming an unmet expectation, and then when you're in those moments of decision, it can almost feel like, ah, well, I'm a little less motivated by my end goal, which is kind of disappointing me currently. And I have the temptation of a food that might be highly craveable or have an emotional response. Like I, there's some comfort in that food too. Mm -hmm. and maybe in those in those moments of decision the food is winning out because i'm really not anchored to something that's really exciting me right now i don't have this this big like goal or target that i'm heading right. towards you know what i mean those decisions add up you know day after day which also you know brings me back to the 5 to 7 days with one meal in the middle of it too and then it can it can definitely feel like well i th i think i just need to avoid food decisions right now you know and and that can push me towards longer fast as well I, I want to encourage you that if you're looking to like level up your fasting skills and do a five to seven day fast, absolutely. It can be mm. transformational, yeah. but just know the possible regain and know that after you come out of that, you want to have a solid plan on how, how to get back to what we call the foundations of fasting, getting in your hydration, making proper food choices, you know, almost like the, the basics of fasting. Like yeah, doing shorter, more consistent fasts. Shorter, like especially more consistent right after that. fast, which is what maintenance will look like, right? Yeah. And some people are listening, oh, I still get, you're not even close to maintenance, right? So the same skills that have you lose the weight are the same skills that have you keep it off, but applied yeah. in a different way. Sure. After I lost the 50 pounds, it was way harder for the next 18 months to two years to figure out how to stop it from coming back Yeah. than right. it was from originally just committing to 50 days of like fire breathing fasting where I was just <laughs> like, give me more, give me more. Let's do a five day. I'm going to do another 72. How fast can I lose the weight? Well, it was pretty, it was, I mean, it wasn't like I was doing four, seven day rounds of fasting. It was 48, 30, 33, 72, 26, mm. 42, 30. Now, obviously I don't have my journal in front of me. We moved, it's in a box somewhere. I can probably find it. But then it was, all right, well, I want to level up. Let's do a five day. The five day turned into seven. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, boom, here we go. Or if it was five or seven, I can never remember. I think you think it was five. I'm thinking seven. I don't know. I probably like to over elaborate on that a little yeah. bit, right? Maybe it was a 20. Um, it was a 20 day fast. <laughs> yeah, no. right. But there were I a lot of food remember, decisions in there too. There were, there were, and there were a lot of food failures in there too. Sure. Where and you I need broke, those. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to encourage you that, yeah, if you want to level it up, go for it, but just be careful on the back end, knowing 
that we really want to be, you know, focusing on those foundational things and those foundational fasting pieces. You know, my daughter just asked me about the tortoise and the hare this morning. And so going back to the tortoise and the hare, like slow and steady really does win the race. So rather than feeling like you need to avoid those, those food decisions, take them on, take them on, you know, head on, think about in the moment, what is so tempting about, you know, this certain craveable food decision? And is that really what I want more than losing the other 50 pounds and actually getting the energy back that I've been looking for? Which one feels more tempting in that moment? If you honestly ask yourself right now, it's not necessarily going to win every time, but if you can keep that kind of question in front of mind, you might make some different decisions in the moment that are going to add up. Yeah. So I like to ask the question when it comes to food, but why? But why am I eating this? Yeah. Where does that come from? Because there's an emotional connection to food. Usually it's halt BS related, hungry, angry, lonely, tired, bored, or stressed. So if you're looking for a refocus, then yeah, please dive into the podcast, reach out, shout out to us, post questions in the group, in the community group. Again, you can find that link in the show notes. Grab the blueprint, the fasting for life blueprint that we dropped in January. It has some more context to the why question of why it matters. I'm going to encourage you just to dive into that, right? Preferably on a longer fast when your head is clear and you got some increased BDNF (laughs) bathing those brain cells where you can get some clarity on, on really why it's important for you to lose the weight. So great, great, great comment, great post. Keep up the great work. You are a massive success and we want to see you continue to have that success as well. So I had a question come in from Joa. Joha, I usually had my vitamins in the morning. Should I wait now until I have my food? Thank you. So this is a question, a beginner type question where, uh, what about lemon? Can I have this? Can I, can I drink mm-hmm. that? And there's tons of posts. We have a pin post in our community group that uh, I outline our perspective on how we answer these types of questions. What about sweeteners? What about insert X, Y, Z, yeah. right? Can I put creamer in my coffee? Bulletproof coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah. It's not a one size fits all. Now, fasting consistently is a one size fits all. You just have to apply the times and the decisions and the lifestyle application to you. But Joha asked about the vitamins. So if you can take the vitamins on an empty stomach, I'm not too worried about it. And I think if you're taking the vitamins for a very intentional reason, then, you know, let's say for vitamin D, I don't get enough sun. I need vitamin D. I know how important it is to keep those numbers up. Yeah. In terms of disease prevention. So I supplement with vitamin D. I don't eat a lot of fish. I have years of imbalanced omega ratios in my cells. So skewed in a lot of, a lot of sixes, not a enough lot of sixes, <laughs> like 30 to one ratios, restaurant foods, college, yeah. like not seed knowing oils. about nutrition, right? <laughs> yeah. Seed oils, all that stuff. So I supplement with fish oil for overall health reasons, right? We know decreasing cardiovascular risk, et cetera. Oh, yeah. So if that's the type of stuff you're doing, great. If there's a health benefit and you like it and you feel good with it, great. Take it. If you can take it on an empty stomach. If not, put it into when you break your fast and then take your supplementation. Now, outside of this, I'll say if you're talking about like protein shakes and those types of things, then I would absolutely move those types of supplementation into your eating window. Now, he specifically okay. said vitamin, so I'm not thinking that's the case. Yeah. But whatever works for you, try it out. But when you say protein shakes, you're thinking about things with actual nutrition, like substantial calories, may have a a blood sugar, insulin response. Okay. We get this question about AG1 too, athletic greens. Sure. Yeah. I mean, if you feel better- I would just do them anytime. I would just do them anytime. It's such a small, as we like to say, paper cut in a house fire. Yeah. Was it like 15 calories? I think when when I pulled it up. Yeah. Technically, it breaks a fast. Sure. But why do most people come to fasting? To lose weight and get healthy. Your fat cells don't care about technically. <laughs> right? It's okay. Your fat cells aren't perfectionists. Yeah. Those now, are our if brain you're, cells. now, if you're a clean faster, then absolutely be a clean faster. Water only. Sure. Do it. Absolutely. Right? 100%. Yeah. So, love the question. I love the perspective. So, Amy had a question. Came in. Could a brisk walk have really dropped my blood sugars from 167 to the high 90s? Wow. Unbelievable. Nice. Yes. It could. We talk a lot about walking and mm-hmm. how walking is one of those optimizers of the weight loss, prioritizing protein, walking after meals, vinegar before meals, eating your meals in a way to, to help balance blood sugar. Yeah. The timing of it. The timing, right? So yes, a walk can do that. So a lot of people replied in the comments, yes, yes, yes. And then Amy asked, did I undo some damage? No one knows I'm fasting. My husband surprised me and bought me all the favorite foods for Mother's Day lunch. Mm. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. 
dun, dun, dun. I remembered. So someone else's plan is now messing with your plan. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if they don't know, then they can't be blamed. Hmm. I have learned this. Yeah. They can't support. My wife and I joke. Hey, you reading my mind right now? You no? read my mind? Okay, yeah. Tell me. Okay, great. In the first <laughs> years of marriage, not so much. Right. Didn't happen. Walked into that bear trap quite a few times. Now I've learned. Yeah, um, I have scars I'm, to prove it. <laughs> I'm actually one more to be a lot more vocal about what I'm thinking. Nice. Uh, where she thinks she tells me. And I'm like, mm, no, not one of those. Oh, my husband forgot. No, not that. Like <laughs> self-admitted. Yeah, I don't think I told you that. Right. So that's part of the problem. But I remembered someone said something about a brisk walk after a high carb meal. Mm -hmm. So I threw my shoes on and booked it up the road for about 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. Good so, move. Way to be proactive great, with it. Great, great, great way to take action, Tommy. The action was taken. The fact that you saw this like around a 70 point drop, even if it was temporary, is Which it was because we haven't gotten it, to that part yet. But. Yeah. <laughs> is is great because we know the insulin response is gonna be less after any sort of meal, but especially after a high carb meal where the, the delta is so, you know, compelling that this would be the normal response and now here's what it is you know, with, with a brisk walk, you know, after the meal. And so it's incredibly powerful. It's also, it's also just a good habit to get into. It's part of your fasting lifestyle. It's part of the foundational things that you can do without really giving it a whole lot of thought or, or too much preparation or anything else like that. So when we, when we look at what's on your plate, we can start to optimize what's on the plate too. And so I'm, I'm glad you highlighted the fact that it was a high carb meal. So I'll let you get back to the story. Well, then she came back a little after and said, I guess joke is in me is on me. Sugars are right back up. So I want to encourage you, Amy, that if you're doing finger pricks, then these two small data points show some promise and show some potential problems. Mm -hmm. Now, a high carb meal, we know spikes your blood sugar. Sure. What time of day was it? Was this a, uh, oh, she said for lunch. So it was midday because if it was okay. in the morning, that would be different. Your blood sugars would already be potentially elevated if you have some blood sugar issues, which a 167 reading, you could, right? Mm -hmm. We don't want to see those big spikes after meals. My wife was recently using a CGM just for fun, just to learn about some of the foods and things and do some do some testing. We like to be guinea pigs. Yeah. And she was like, man, I ate Chipotle. My blood sugar went up like 40 points and her blood sugar hadn't budged out of the green. Yeah. Like once in like two mm -hmm. weeks. She's like- yep. I worked out. This happened. I did this, this happened. I'm like, why? Because you're healthy. Why? Because you're healthy. Why? Because you're healthy. You don't have any, your insulin's like 2.5. You don't have any <laughs> insulin resistance. You are metabolically healthy. But she ate Chipotle, went up 40, 40 spike for her, which is the biggest spike she's had. I bet she was uh, frustrated to she say was, the least. She was like, ah, what did I do wrong? Right? Yeah. Like Amy. Ah, what, what, what am I broken? So then she's like, you know what? She gave me a compliment and said, I think I'm going to have it add guac next time and see what happens. Nice. She added the guac, didn't spike at all. So Crazy. you have one data point here, Amy. Now your blood sugars were 167. The fact that they went down and responded to the walk, great. Yes. But there's a few things in here. If your heart rate elevated, because you said brisk, and I don't know about you, I can think about back in the day after Thanksgiving, if I tried to go for a walk, I'd oh, be like man. laboring. I'd be like. <gasps> <laughs> yeah. You feel every breath because right? you're full. So yeah. I'd be out of breath. My heart rate would be elevated, right? So you would actually get a cortisol spike, which would then result in your body requiring blood sugar, mm. which would then cause them to rebound after you burn through some of that short-term storage. Yeah. Especially so, if you're very sedentary, right? Like if you're not conditioned for this and then you, you just all of a sudden went out and did this, then that's potentially higher, more stressful on the body too. Right. So if the sugars are that high, then you might need more than a 20 minute walk, right? Because Amy did yeah. admit she walks three miles a day, which is great. Walking's fantastic. But this is just one small data point yeah. with one not normal meal. So I wouldn't beat yourself up too much about it, but I also like to know. So yeah. possibly a CGM, continuous glucose monitor might be helpful. Or maybe recreate this on your terms on a certain day mm -hmm. and play around with some of the variables. Check it again after doing a walk that's twice as long or mm -hmm. three times as long. And see what happened after you had that same yep. that same meal. Or check it at the two hour mark hmm. post, because we don't know when she tested it. Two hours post meal or two hours post walk. See what your blood sugar is doing then. If it returned to normal, great. You're okay. 
cool thing this is, is why people always ask about like test strips and keto mojos and cgms yes we have partnered with a lot of you know companies that we trust because it, it is helpful for reversing diabetes and knowing yeah. physiologically what's going on but sometimes it can cause a chink in the armor sure or doubt and, and have you doubt the yeah. situation the cool thing is the the antidote to the doubt right here is the fact that if you went from 167 down to you know what was it 97 so what what's going to matter is the area under the curve over time so if you did if you dropped your blood sugar for a while if normally it would have been elevated for that for let's say 4 hours yep. and now it was only elevated for 3 or 3 and a half guess what you made an impact you right. made a difference it was it was only 75 or 80 percent of what it would have been if you did the same thing without the walk like it's worth it it's worth yeah. it to do that and that's yeah. that's your encouragement to keep doing what you're doing the focus here is walking after the meal because she said she walks three miles every day walking after meals has been shown yes. to decrease blood sugar spike now if it was a very high carb chocolatey indulgent thing yeah. then and you have some insulin resistance which you might based on that 167 number i don't know mm -hmm. but you're going to get a major insulin rise mm. to process that blood sugar, which then can cause a rebound effect because your body isn't effectively using insulin. Your insulin sensitivity isn't as good as it should be. Yeah. So you'll see these big swings where we yeah, want to, like you point. said, minimize those peaks and valleys and get more time in a healthy range over time. Yeah. So- the positive here is you now know what your body did this time. You now can recreate it. We took some liberties with the variables here. Sure. But the positive here is that you took the action. So now take the action with intention, walking after your meals consistently, and you're going to see some crazy, crazy change. You're on the, yes. you're on the right path. Just yep. don't let this derail you. It was Mother's Day. He didn't know, okay? For all the husbands <laughs> out there, plan better. But he didn't know. Maybe yeah. you ask your wife what she's expecting. Mm. I learned that after Mother's Day number one. When my <laughs> wife lost her mother the previous year. I learned oh, like, man. whoa, there was some emotion. I wasn't even thinking about that. Yeah. I was just like, how can we make this day special? So hall pass for him, right? Okay, he mm. gets, it's fine. Next year, you know, next time, you know, next celebration, you know. But the fact is you took the action and that's what really matters. So I'm proud of you, Amy, for doing it. And then also now hopefully moving past it. Yeah. Keep taking action for sure. Yep. Keep taking action. That's what we want you guys to do. Every episode, we want you to have something actionable that you can do. So if you're looking to continue the conversation, head to the show notes, you can join the Fasting for Life community, where it is all like-minded fasters that we break the first two rules of fasting each and every day. Just incredible, positive, encouraging. I've been a part of some fasting groups like the Intermittent Fasting for Men group. It's pretty aggressive, pretty, pretty angry, not my cup of tea. So we, we just have a great group of people. Grab the blueprint, the blueprint to fasting mm -hmm. for fat loss. It's our 20 page PDF fasting resource. It talks about schedules, how to break your fast, a little bit of the why and the context behind why we believe fasting is such a powerful, powerful tool for so many folks. And Tommy, I think that's all we got for today. So yeah, good stuff. Appreciate the conversation. Yeah. Keep taking action, guys. You never know what that next breakthrough is that might be right around the corner. Keep the questions coming in. We love the five star yeah. reviews. Thank yes. you, sir. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Bye. So you've heard today's episode and you may be wondering, where do I start? Head on over to thefastingforlife.com and sign up for our newsletter where you'll receive fasting tips and strategies to maximize results and fit fasting into your day-to-day -day life. While you're there, download your free fast start guide to get started today. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to leave us a five-star review and we'll be back next week with another episode of Fasting for Life.